Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss the functioning of the respiratory system. So let's get started. So when we talk about the respiratory system, we're talking about the organs that are responsible for the exchange of gases, gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now, the main organs would be the lungs, and inside of the lungs, thousands and thousands of clusters of air sacs known as the alveoli. So here's a little zoomed in diagram here of one of those air sacs of an alveolus. And notice it has a tiny capillary just on the outside of it. Well, what happens is oxygen will diffuse into the capillary, into the bloodstream. While that's happening, carbon dioxide diffuses out. Carbon dioxide is removed from the capillary into the alveoli. And so when a red blood cell comes along, here comes a red blood cell, the red blood cell will pick up some of the oxygen, and that oxygen is then distributed through your body because of the actions of your circulatory system. You know, your heart is pumping the, uh, the blood and the blood cells all throughout your body. So this is how the gas is, the gases, carbon dioxide and oxygen are exchanged at the alveoli. We're gonna go into this in a little more detail in a moment. So next I want to focus on the path that air will travel when it's inhaled. So we're going to start with the nasal cavity, or the nose. So sorry mouth breathers, but we're going to focus on the nasal cavity. Well first of all, this process is going to begin when you look at the muscle underneath our two lungs called the diaphragm. When this muscle contracts, it actually pulls air and oxygen into our lungs. And so the diaphragm plays a really important process in the pathway in which air will then enter our system. So what we're going to have is oxygen being pulled into the nasal cavity. You know, the nasal cavity also does a great job in just warming the air in case it's really dry and really cold. That could be a, a problem for people with various breathing conditions such as asthma or bronchitis. So next we have the back of the throat known as the pharynx. Now this is also part of the digestive system, but for today again we're focusing on the respiratory system. So the oxygen is now moved to the back of the throat, the pharynx in my animation. The pharynx will actually connect to the blue tube that you see in the picture called the trachea, and the trachea will then take air into the two lungs. And so one thing I want to mention, the pharynx is lined with cells that possess little tiny microscopic hairs on them called cilia. And so you add the mucous membranes and the cilia and uh, you know, allergens such as pollen grains or dust can get trapped in this sticky coating, the cilia and the mucous membranes, and prevent the irritant from ever reaching your respiratory system in your lungs. So it's a great way to filter some of the air that we breathe. So now we're going to make our way down the trachea, or also called the windpipe. And so here we have the oxygen moving down the blue tube known as the trachea. And this is the passage that will lead towards both of your lungs. Now we have our left lung and our right lung. Again, this is from the orientation of the person, so even it looks like it's backwards by when you look at the screen here. The left lung appears on the right, the right lung appears on the left, but this is from the orientation of the person. You know, one thing I want to mention before we move on is how does the oxygen go down the trachea and not the other tube at the back of your throat called the esophagus, which is part of your digestive system? Well, we have a little flap of tissue right here called the epiglottis. Whenever we swallow food or drink, this flap of tissue, the epiglottis, seals off the trachea. So therefore, food and, and, and drink are then directed down the esophagus. You know, every now and then, uh, we, you know, we've swallowed food or drink and it actually goes down our trachea. And, and that starts the gag reflex, the coughing and the gagging. And eventually we cough up and, and spit up whatever accidentally, accidentally went down the wrong tube. And one thing to also mention about the trachea, like the pharynx, the trachea is also lined with cilia and the, uh, to help trap and catch any irritants and allergens and pollen grains that could be in the air that could, uh, ir uh, that could irritate one's ability to breathe. 
and eventually as the air moves down the trachea there's there's a fork in the in the road we have two pathways one leads into one bronchi leads into the right lung and one bronchi leads into the left lung and so that's what the bronchi are these are the two dividing branches that will direct air into each of the two lungs and so oxygen uh, you know splits off some of the oxygen goes to the left bronchi some of the oxygen goes to the right bronchi and ultimately the bronchi then subdivide into thousands and thousands and thousands of smaller branches scattered and spread throughout your lungs and these are these thousands of smaller branches are what are called the bronchioles and so as oxygen moves through these branches the bronchioles uh, you can see the the true uh, importance of this i hope is to really increase the amount of surface area uh, when when we are breathing to increase the surface area of gas exchange this helps to uh, allow for the most absorption of oxygen with every single breath having all the oxygen branch off into these thousands and thousands of different tubes increases our ability to get oxygen from the from the air that we breathe and then as we come to the tips of the bronchioles there are these clustered air sacs if you kind of use your imagination it kind of looks like a cluster of grapes and these are called the alveoli and this is where really the magic of the respiratory system happens and so these clustered air sacs are located at the tips or at the ends of the thousands and thousands of bronchioles so you can imagine there are thousands and thousands of alveoli in your lungs as well okay so what we're going to do next is we're going to zoom on in and take a closer look at the alveoli and when we do we can see that the alveoli are wrapped around have little tiny blood capillaries wrapped around them this is really important because the oxygen uh, that is inhaled will enter these capillaries and then your heart will pump and carry the oxygen away all throughout your body so let's add here comes some oxygen let's add some oxygen and what we're going to do is we're going to zoom on into this one single alveolus right here and here's all the oxygen that just entered and as we said a moment ago as we said a moment ago there's a blood capillary wrapped around the uh, the alveoli and so notice the color change the blue area of the capillary represents an, an area that's oxygen poor and the red represents an area that's oxygen rich well how does this change how does the blood go from oxygen poor to oxygen rich well, if you remember what diffusion is, the movement of molecules from an area of high to low concentration. Right now, there's a high concentration of oxygen inside the alveoli, and there's a low concentration of oxygen in the capillaries. And so oxygen will simply diffuse from a high concentration to a low concentration, and then it's picked up by a red blood cell. And so let's see that again. Oxygen diffuses in and is picked up by a red blood cell and carried away. Let's see that again. Oxygen diffuses in and is picked up by a red blood cell and carried away. Now, of course, in reality, it's a big flood of oxygen that's diffusing into the capillary. While that's happening, carbon dioxide is being released and is diffusing out of the capillary and into the alveoli. The carbon dioxide is diffusing from a high concentration, which is in the capillary, to a low concentration, which is in the alveoli. And so this is what we meant earlier when I said the exchange of gas. Carbon dioxide is exchanged for oxygen. So now that we traced the path that air and oxygen uh, travels through the respiratory system, pause the video pause the video right now and try to identify the parts that you see in the diagram I'm gonna go over the answers in three two one okay so part a what did you think if you thought part a oh those are the bronchi then you were correct part B part B is simply just the person's right lung again even though it looks like it's on the left side of your computer screen from the perspective of the person this would be the the right side of their body Therefore, letter C. Letter C is the nasal cavity. Find letter D. Letter D are the thousands of branches 
called the bronchioles. What about letter E? Letter E is the muscle underneath our, our two lungs called the diaphragm. And this helps to push open the ribs and draw air into our system. How about letter F? Letter F would be the left lung. Again, even though it's on the right side of your screen, from the perspective of the person, this would be their left lung. How about letter G? What's letter G? Letter G is the trachea, also called the windpipe. And then how about letter H? Letter H is the pharynx, the back of the throat called the pharynx. And then finally, letter I. Letter I, when you zoom on in, you see those clusters. That would be the alveoli. And so if you're in my biology class, you know, pause the video and take this practice quiz and see how you do. I'd be happy to check your answers before school or after school one day. Everybody else, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful.